so today we are going to have a very you know interesting uh, field in the embedded system that is sensing techniques how what type of sensor we use how we interface those those sensors with our embedded systems and what are their practical uses so uh, let's get started so these are uh, the topics that i'm going to cover in today's webinar introduction to embedded systems yes we are going to uh, discuss and have some brief idea of what embedded system is and then obviously the need of sensing techniques why we need to study sensing techniques in embedded systems and how it is going to give you benefits then we'll be having basic fundamentals how sensor is interfaced and how the data we read it from the sensor and how we basically communicate to the sensor and then what algorithm we put how we process the raw data which we acquire from sensor and after that what we do whether we store it or we display it. so we will be having a basic fundamental like how to interface and how to design a sensor based embedded systems then we'll be having a beautiful case study which is nothing but a you know uh, one of the most recent embedded product which is already there in the market and then later we'll be discussing on what skills you will be learning with this course and and the job prospects like which job designation you people can target and then later we'll be having one query sessions so uh, yeah let's start with the embedded system so what do you mean by embedded system you people might have read somewhere or or listen or you might have studied what embedded system is but basically what do you mean by embedded system so it is nothing but a combined system what do you mean by embedded embedded is nothing but you know combining something so embedded system is basically combining some small small systems on a single platform so it is nothing but your attached or combined system and since this term the embedded system is related to electronics so that's why these small small components or these small small uh, uh, modules will be your electronic component and yes with its driver software but keep in mind sometimes we don't need the software in it so that's why it is optional so what is embedded system it's a combined system with electronic component and its driver software which is optional so and keeping it as basic as it should be it is not like you know those high fi definitions which are really difficult to understand so embedded system if if you people have asked like what what do you mean by embedded system so it's nothing but a combined system a system which has lot of other sub systems is nothing but your embedded system so i have dragged lot of uh, examples which you people can uh, relate to so the first real time example will be in the field of automotive control system you know automotive in the sense all the vehicle systems like two wheelers four wheelers then you have goods carrier trucks and and you have the other uh, you know smart uh, vehicles and and uh, goods carrier system so speed control yes whatever speed control system we have in our car or in your bike if if you are using or if you have your personal bike you might have seen now what is you have a digital speedometer so that digital speedometer is nothing but it converts your angular speed the speed of your vehicle and it displays onto your system so yes we can call it as an embedded system because we have a sensor here that sensor calculates your angular rotational motion and then it actually reads the data we have some piece of code that code actually converts your your raw data and it shows and it calculates your speed in uh, meter per hour or kilometer per hour and we actually display it on our screen so yes speed control system is nothing but a example of embedded systems then we have engine control systems engine control system we are not talking in terms of the pure automotive engine control system here we are talking in terms of the embedded system so engine control nothing but you know like temperature controlling and monitoring actually it is nothing but a engine monitoring system instead of control system so we can have some kind of embedded system which monitors some engine parameters let's say 
one of the major parameter for engine is monitoring temperature of engine so what we can have is we can have a sensor on the engine and can read the value of sensor and then again we can process it and calculate the actual temperature and we can store it or we can display it. same lighting control you might have seen in a lot of vehicles we have front light back light side lights then we have different you know patterns the light patterns and again this is also being controlled with the help of embedded systems then in automotive we have you know one of the uh, most important feature that is safety control systems this has been launched very recently because this was not there in early 90s and 80s but nowadays a lot of automotive manufacturers are giving safety control system including your airbag system like how that that functions then we have for that uh, they actually use uh, some collision sensor and uh, they actually uh, calculate you know whether the vibration or the collision of your vehicle has crossed to one particular threshold limit and based on that uh, they determine that whether your uh, vehicle has encountered with any accident or not and based on that they open airbags you might have uh, seen that nowadays cars are equipped with airbag systems so yes for this also we need an embedded systems an embedded system to read the collision value of the vehicle and based on our collision value we uh, trigger our airbag system so yes safety control system is also part of embedded system in automotive then again we have a display control system which actually displays controls and monitors all the other systems including speed engine light and safety so in automotive control system also we use embedded system a lot and the next example would be very uh, you know relatable to you it is in the field of your consumer electronics here we have obviously the television and radio system whatever tv starting from uh, you know the old tvs you might have uh, seen uh, with you know the big crt inside in it till today what what type of technology we are using in television you know like oled and we have lcds and we have other technologies and displays so for that also we need embedded system because whatever signal we are getting the audio signal and the video signal that signal they captures it and they convert the signal in your display format so basically you need a, a a kind of graphics embedded system where it converts your signal into your display and then again where the sensing technique comes in tv and radio system definitely for tv i have something called remote a remote control which is used to control my entire tv remotely so again for remote we have uh, one ir sensor and we on on the set top box or maybe on the tv itself uh, we will be having one receiver so based on based on my inputs from the from the remote whether you want to change the channel or whether you want to increase or decrease your uh, uh, volume of the tv or whether you want to uh, you know do any any brightness setting or any any television setting or audio setting we we use remote so yes basically this is also a very important sensing embedded based uh, system their tv and your radio system then again cellular devices means your cell phone this is again one of the uh, widely used embedded product in the market cellular phones it is an embedded product because it has a lot of features you can you can have a call you can you can record a lot of things you can you can play a video you can play audio you can record audio and then we have a lot of other sensors let's say for gyroscope you know to turn turn any image or video from from portrait mode to landscape mode and we have uh, what you call your uh, proximity sensor like whenever you you are on a call and when you keep your phone near to your your ear then then the backlight immediately turns off so again that has a sensor so basically it has a lot of subsystems including on a particular one combined system that's why it is an example of embedded system then again the recent consumer electronic product that is smart watches whatever you see fitness bands fitness trackers people tracker then your uh, 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 you know other other watches which has some special feature in it so all these watches are nothing but you know lot of features embed into it so that's why 
we can take this example in the field of embedded system so the next <coughs> example field will be again medical devices then here in medical devices we have we'll start from the old devices like x-ray machines then we have uh, mri scans for brain then we have ct scans then we have sonographies then to the recent ones with you know heart rate monitoring then oxygen level monitoring then we have blood sugar monitoring so all these machines all these small small devices now nowadays companies are launching these are nothing but your embedded products because these devices have a lot of sensors a lot of features in it and all these features are combined on a single platform or a single device so yes we can include medical devices also in this field and the last would be obviously some confidential fields like defense aerospace scientific r and d like isro drdo nasa spacex and the other private organizations which works on r and d so yes to do lot of r and d we need embedded system we need electronics and we need sensing techniques so this is you know the brief about embedded systems and these are the fields where you use and and these are all familiar fields and these are all familiar devices and and that's why i put here and this is what about your embedded systems so next we are going to have something which is really important and something which is related to this webinar and that is why do you need sensing techniques so why do we need a sensing technique why why do i learn if i am a fresher if i am pursuing my engineering in the field of let's say electronics electronics communication electronics telecommunication or maybe electronics and electrical or whichever field which is which they have included an embedded system as a subject why do you need to study sensing techniques so let us let us look into it like why why do we need actually and for that let's say and i will give you an example so the example would be like definitely embedded system fulfills purpose of a given requirement why do we need to study something because that is going to give you some kind of outputs or if you have a requirement then only you will going to study something now why you are studying because you need to have a job you need to you need to have a a proper career and you need to have lot of other plans in your life so everything has a purpose so why we design embedded system to fulfill a given requirement let's say i have a requirement where i need to design one temperature monitoring system for a particular let's say a geyser or maybe a furnace so that is my requirement so for that i need to design one embedded system so basically with embedded system we actually solve critical problems which is given to us and these problems are going to definitely make our job easy and with with you know proper efficiency and durability and around 70 to 90% of all these requirements are actually related to connecting the outer world to your digital world which means let me give an example i want to design one temperature based embedded systems so what is my temperature if if there is a requirement that i have to design one temperature system which should continuously monitor my temp my my let's say my geyser temperature or my if i have any furnace so the furnace temperature so what do you mean by temperature this is nothing but a physical quantity temperature is physical quantity temperature rises based on the atmosphere temperature or the device temperature so that is nothing but my physical quantity so these physical quantity somehow i have to design one system which should read that temperature or that physical quantity and converts it into my digital quantity so that physical quantity we need to convert into digital quantity so most of embedded products whatever you see around you these are nothing but converting your physical quantity into digital quantity and then process it and then and then store it and display it. so by this way we can definitely say that a lot of embedded systems are nothing but the devices which are which are designed to convert your physical world into digital world and 
here comes your sensing part your sensing technology plays very important part because again yes whatever device you have you need to know that let's say i have a temperature sensor how am i going to interface that temperature sensor now forget that first you need to think that what type of temperature sensor do i need to use because there will be a lot of temperature sensors available in the market what are the design aspects that we need to consider so that that will be suitable for your requirement that should be the first question then based on that we can go further and see like how we are going to interface the sensor what type of sensor we are going to use what what parameter of the sensor we should consider like the efficiency like the temperature range like the resolution of the of the sensor the durability of the sensor and then what feature the sensor has feature and the sense you know some sensor have memory in it and some sensor have some a small controlling protocol in it so it is not basically a sensor you can actually store the data inside sensor also so this is just an example that i'm giving you like in terms of the feature so why how are you going to design it and and that and there uh, the sensing technology comes and it really plays an important part and why i have put it this because you take any embedded systems you will definitely find out that at least one feature is related on sensing techniques so that is the reason why we need to learn sensing technology so here i have given you one very relatable uh, example that is your covid 19 and you already know that nowadays the entire world is suffering from covid 19 and it is really difficult uh, for everyone and uh, yes we we have lot of people to appreciate for it like doctors and and the other medical research companies and organization who are really doing great jobs and and hands off to them and uh, we we really hope that this should uh, we should get from this over uh, very soon so yes during this uh, this pandemic lot of people are you know engage like how how do we how do we cure about this uh, this virus and you know to cure it first we need to understand all the parameters like when it goes inside human body what happens to your human body then only we will be able to understand you know to to have a solution for the problem so it is like to giving solution for a particular problem you need to have a clear picture of your requirement so for that doctors and researchers have found out that the covid positive patients they faces breathing difficulties so at some stages their oxygen level goes down and that oxygen level is unpredictable which means you cannot predict if you have 10% 10 positive covid patients then it is very difficult to determine that the decrement of oxygen level is steady it depends on a given person's immune system so based on you know the immune system of a person it varies if if the immune system of a person is 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 very weak so there is a chance that you can have or you can see droppage in the oxygen level very fast or very vigorous and for this if let's say we have a hospital and we have more than 500 patient in it it is very 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 difficult to monitor each and every person's oxygen level and to have this report that yes for particular patients the oxygen level is going down and they need medical support so for that definitely we need a lot of manpower if we have 500 patient it is very difficult to manage also so why not to develop a device why not to have a portable embedded device which keeps on actually monitoring your temperature i have actually missed one point here you can add temperature sensor oxygen and heart rate and all these features we can monitor with one embedded device and actually we can have one networking in it so that all these devices will be connected wirelessly to my a local network of that particular hospital so that let's say i have 500 patients so i have small device which you can put it inside your finger or you can wear it as a wristband it depends on how we want to design it and we can assign that particular device to each and every patient so and we can you know have a monitoring system so like let's say after every 
one hour or after every 30 minutes it will calculate temperature of the person and it will calculate the oxygen level of the person it will calculate the heart rate beats per minute of the person patient and it will keep on storing in our network and we will be having one supervisor which will monitor you know like which patients oxygen level temperature and the heart rate is proper and who's uh, is going down and up so we can create one critical alerts as well like we can set one threshold in that we can have something like if the system will notify us that okay out of 500 patient patient number 5 patient number 10 let's say patient number 100 their oxygen level is going below 80 or below 70 it's just like what threshold level is set so it is very easy to cure them and it is very you know easy for for the medical institution you know to look into and to have a proper system and for that we need very less uh, manpower as well because again more manpower means maintaining social distancing and and the other maintenance would be very high so instead of that we can have a product and which have lot of sensors which has which have lot of medical related sensors and and by this way we can definitely solve this problem so yes yes this is the reason why we need sensing technology this is just an example which i have given you this was the requirement we have worked on it we have analyzed or someone else has given this analysis let's say this was our requirement and based on that we we developed something which is related to sensing techniques so yes this is the reason why we need to understand sensing techniques if let's say you join a company or if you want to join a company and if they give you this project let's say by god's grace if you get the same project then let's say you have all this basics already with you if you have already learned all the sensing techniques how to interface sensor how to acquire data how to process data what algorithm to put and how to write a code in terms of hardware and in terms of software how to design it then it will be really benefit it will be really uh, you know beneficial for you to have a better career and to have very in depth knowledge of your embedded system so that is the reason why you need to have sensing techniques and why you need to study sensing techniques in embedded systems this is all about our sensing techniques